We're out here to study what happens to a distribution line when it is impacted and why lines fail the way they do and how we might be able to mitigate or change how the line responds when things happen. What we're doing is we're dropping a 55 foot pole on the line um, to try to simulate uh, heavy trees falling into the line. You almost got to go out there and stand in a storm and be standing in the right spot to see it. But here, here we under a test case, we can see what happens when we, we drop a simulated tree on the line. So what we're basically trying to do then is measure the forces yep. uh, for failure of the line, line construction, arms, pins, yep. conductors. Yep. And this type of research uh, helps us figure out better line designs. So wanted to come out here where they're doing live tests rather than in the lab and see uh, what happens on old conductor, old cross arms, uh, the standard infrastructure that we have just about everywhere in the system. These are scientific tests, uh, things you wouldn't normally do in the field, but we're understanding mechanically how all of the parts of the distribution line, the conductor, the supporting structures, how all of them interact and behave uh, and how they break. And so the information that we're collecting out here today is a lot of just visual uh, data from movies and, uh, and pictures and forensics. And we're also collecting data on how much force uh, an, an impact can create, say like when we're dropping our pole, uh, how much force does that actually create on the line? We're using scientific instruments like strain gauges, um, we're high-speed photography to be able to take this back to the lab and understand exactly how these things break. Excel's letting us do this testing is exceedingly valuable. Um, a lot of the tests that we've been doing thus far, they're lab tests and controlled environments, and this is a real-life situation, and so the data that we collect is, is that much more valuable. It's, mo it's more representative of an actual system. In partnership with EPRI, we were in at the beginning to develop a distribution grid resiliency study to understand uh, the mechanics of how lines break. EPRI stands for the Electric Power Research Institute. And it's a, it's a collaborative, uh, it's an or organization that uh, supports uh, utilities across the country uh, in doing testing efforts like this to, to help improve uh, the materials and, the, and the, uh, the processes we use. The resiliency project's been going on about 18 months. Um, We've had a couple workshops with EPRI at, at their lab in, in Lenox, and uh, this is the first time that they've actually done live tests with the utility. This is really our part at uh, helping out uh, EPRI and trying to help us resolve uh, how we can uh, improve, the, uh, improve the resiliency, the strength of our system under storm conditions. It is very unique. Um, we're also planning on the AEP system to do a similar test uh, in a wooded area uh, coming up in late July. So uh, another reason we came out uh, is just to see what logistics are needed, um, see what, uh, what kind of tests are being done, and, and see what we can do uh, also maybe just a little different uh, than try to repeat everything. We are looking at different wood cross, new wood cross arms versus fiberglass cross arms, different conductor size, different type of conductor. Uh, what we're dealing with here is a, a number four copper conductor, solid solid copper. Uh, when we get down uh, further down, we'll be looking at uh, aluminum steel reinforced conductor. We've already seen one interesting uh, issue here with the conductor breaking outside the span that was actually impacted, where that conductor was stretched and broke at a place where possibly lightning had struck it. We see evidence of, uh, of burning there on the conductor at that point. Um, I guess uh, a little bit of surprise around the way some of the poles twisted, um, which, which says really that the, uh, that, the, that the conductor ties were holding it pretty well. The new arms uh, held up surprisingly uh, better than I anticipated. I thought for sure we'd see them split out at the pins, but we've had some, uh, some of the old cob arms up here fail right away. 
and uh, we haven't had any broken poles yet. So that's kind of amazing considering this line is at least 50 years old. Uh, I think it's going to be some really good information that will help us in designing our lines. What we're trying to do is find ways to uh, increase the speed at which restoration can happen and find ways to harden the system so that when trees fall on the line, maybe it doesn't come down or maybe it comes down in a controlled way so that restoration can be very, very quick. So instead of having to replace an entire pole, uh, maybe you replace a cross arm. So reduce the amount of time that customers are out of, out of power.